So this is uh, part three of the Vinny story, and you know, part one was uh, an email that showed up from basically uh, another part of the world with uh, an individual who had some questions, and he told me a bit of his story and sent some photographs, and then um, I presented that to you all to, as an opportunity to ask yourself what would you think is going on with Vinny. Uh, and then in part two, we shared a number of uh, email exchanges and uh, more um, photographs from Vinny about what he was experiencing and some of um, his the process um, that he went through of accepting that what was going on was not necessarily curable from the standpoint of fixing the problem that was causing it, although he did have an interesting idea that maybe there was some way to improve his veins to prevent these broken red blood cells from spilling out and causing a, a non-pruritic or a non-itching rash. But uh, the, the first question that you might have asked is what could have caused this initially, and, and that's the question that uh, that I had as well. And uh, my best guess, and that's what it is as a guess, is is that uh, Vinny is a victim of rheumatic heart disease and this follows a strep infection. Uh, initially uh, it's called rheumatic fever and it leads to rheumatic heart disease but the rheumatic fever if you look here of course there's arthritis and little nodules and, and fever and etc but one of the things and you can see right here that they experience is a blotchy rash that doesn't itch. Now this is not the same rash that we were seeing in the pictures before. Uh, the initial rash would look more like this and it's what we would call a scarlatinic rash and so that's a little bit over magnified. Uh, so it's a very fine rash, more of a petechial rash or small little spots that kind of come together into a confluence into uh, more of a macular or even papular pattern but that's the initial rash following a strep infection and this is why we tend to run a strep tests when people come in with a sore throat uh, as opposed to not testing for other problems and the reason is is because by stopping a strep infection early we can help prevent uh, a secondary problem called rheumatic heart disease. And what rheumatic heart disease is, is basically a condition where the body begins to mount an immune response against the heart valves and it leads to inflammation and then uh, poor valvular function where they might stenose or stick almost closed or they might stay open. Uh, but either way, it, it uh, leads to a poorly functioning heart. And as you see here, rheumatic fever is common worldwide, is responsible for many cases of damaged heart valves, not common in the U.S., uh, mainly because we tend to be a little bit more aggressive about treating uh, with antibiotics. Uh, last outbreak in the U.S. was in the 1980s. Generally, this affects children ages 6 to 15. If you remember, Vinny said the first time he had a rash like this was when he was 17. Um, and rheumatic fever approximately uh, begins approximately uh, 20 days after strep throat or the scarlet fever or scarlatinic rash. Um, and then secondarily, once the heart damage has been done to the valves over the years, we can see some um, papular rashes, but almost always the patient ends up uh, requiring a mechanical or biological valve replacement because they end up with heart failure and, uh, and due to a valvular condition where the heart valve is not functioning properly. And you can see here in this particular case, this is a patient who's uh, had heart valve uh, replaced and they are on Coumadin uh, therapy. And this might look a little bit more like what we saw initially uh, with Vinny. And here's another uh, picture of what it looks like when uh, you get a rash after being on 
warfarin or coumadin and you can see uh, it's sort of a flat uh, purpura or uh, macular red rash these are not pruritic they don't cause itching but they're easy to identify in patients uh, who who are on coumadin and and have heart valve replace so I think our story with Vinny is an interesting story where he was uh, he had dealt with uh, on and off rashes over the years due to um, initially the uh, strep infection and then the rheumatic fever and then probably with some valvular issues in his natural valves he began to have problems and then he required uh, the replacement of two valves in his heart and then um, he's going to need lifetime anticoagulant therapy and the inexpensive way to achieve that in most places is with uh, Coumadin or uh, Warfarin would be the, the uh, drug name but Coumadin is the brand name and it has a very narrow therapeutic range and it's very easy to see patients be overly anticoagulated while taking Coumadin so it's necessary to, to frequently monitor uh, those uh, levels of anticoagulation but when a patient uh, is on uh, warfarin or Coumadin then uh, it's not unusual to see them uh, develop this kind of uh, non-puritic uh, papular uh, purpura macular rash so I think what's going on with uh, Vinny is uh, easily explained by his history and uh, the surgical procedures that he's been through. I do not believe that Vinny has a non or undiagnosed uh, mysterious rash. I think it's very explainable by uh, a streptococcal infection that lead to, led to rheumatic heart disease, rheumatic valvular disease. Uh, and now perpetual anticoagulant therapy and I think he's disturbed by the fact that he has to take this medication and endure these unsightly red spots um, so I've tried to be uh, encouraging for him uh, and uh, let him know that he doesn't need to keep spending money looking for a solution to his problem what I don't understand is why he hasn't had a physician at some point that said hey look this is going to keep happening it's because of what you've been through and it's because of the fact that you're on this medication to prevent you from developing a clot that could cause a stroke while you have artificial heart valves um, and and you don't need to keep worrying about it so I don't understand why uh, he hasn't gotten the message either he's just in denial uh, or nobody's delivered the message directly to him but I hope that through this experience uh, with me that Hopefully he understands better now that this is directly due to the surgical history, the first the infectious disease history, but then the surgical history, and now the fact that he needs to uh, live on anticoagulant therapy for the remainder of his life. Anyway, guys, thanks for uh, watching and uh, taking a look at the whole uh, Vinny story. I hope you like these because I, I uh, work with folks frequently on these, and if you do like them, I'll keep doing them. Anyway, I hope you've had a great weekend. Bye for now. Hey there, Dr. Gilmore fans. We have an update about Coco Skin Plus. It's the newest supplement from the marvelous mind of Dr. John Gilmore. The proprietary mix of high potency biotin, extra virgin coconut oil, and vegetable extracts is great for thicker hair, stronger, healthier nails, and softer skin. So if you notice your hair lacks luster, your nails aren't what they used to be, or your skin is dry and chapped, it's time to check out Coco Skin Plus. I have personally found that it's way easier to prevent chapped lips than it is to treat them. And I used to take a coconut oil supplement for it, so switching over to Coco Plus was an upgrade for me. It was for Kelly too, let's hear from her. I used to take regular biotin for thicker hair, so switching over to Coco Skin Plus was a no-brainer. Nice, we'll put an Amazon link below. So get your 90-day supply today.